What do you want to know? What do you want to know? I think why is a good place to start. Why, why did what? this happen? Why did a team that only scored – how does a team, I guess, only score on 2% of their expected shots, on their expected goals? How does, how does a team with this much talent up front still have to front load their top line because they're afraid the other guys can't get it done? Well, Adam um, – you know, it's, it's like, forget the defense. We know that sucks. I mean, yep. how, do you, how do you not score a fucking goal, man? <laughs> like, I don't somewhere, know. Somewhere, Adam, between questions and answers are possibilities. So I see two. Mm. They're unlucky. Or they suck. <laughs> they suck. They're not good. And there was a piece that I felt during the third period of that game and during the handshake line, I mean, the bastards, the, the, the bastards, like, because you actually had to hold on for the entire game because mm-hmm. you're like, based on last game, literally the last game, they might do this. The bastards, the sons of guns that they are for making us believe, for making it a possibility that they might legitimately come back in this game. But the peace that I felt throughout the third period and handshake line was so different than the year before because what did we have game six against washington they lose it wasn't in the nicest fashion but like five overtime games against the president's trophy winning team you probably shouldn't even made the playoffs Mm -hmm. you're the youngest team in the league that was sick that was cool Mm -hmm. game seven to boston the next year 2018 that was annoying capping him with that Disgusting goal should have gone down in Leaf folklore history. Mm-hmm. Um, they blow that. But they shouldn't have been in that series to begin with. They were down 3-1. They were not the better team. Mm-hmm. Last year, they were, I thought, clearly the better team against Boston through five games. Had an opportunity to close it on home ice. Awful defensive performance. Just awful. Game seven, you show up. TD Garden again. You play your worst game of the series. Matthews doesn't reach 19 minutes. That felt, that felt bad. That felt like the Leafs blew it. They blew it. Worse than the year before when they actually blew it because they had a third period lead. They blew it because they had an opportunity to finish these guys off twice and they couldn't do it. This one, the piece I found was, oh, they're just not good enough. Like, oh, well... Uh, when the when one team is playing another and one of them is just not very good, uh, you expect them to lose, and the Leafs are just not very good. Oh, Steve, they shot 2%. Oh, Steve, it's this five-game series in the middle of the summer. Okay. Okay. Despite all evidence to the contrary, okay. Like, you cannot tell me you watched all 70 games this season before this qualifying round and thought they were good. Right. They're not good. Uh, and here's the problem that I sort of talked myself through. What about them is good? What is good? They got a top 10 starter? No. No, they don't. No, they, they don't. You don't think Anderson? You don't think He's not a top 10. Draft, no. If there was a draft tomorrow, you don't think Anderson goes top 10? No. Like all the goalies He'd go would top 10. He'd go top 10. It'd be the wrong pick. Should. It would be the wrong pick. Top he's, he's all right. He, he is – Anderson is in, deeply ingrained in the bedrock of okay. He's okay. The defense, uh, we don't even need to dignify it with spending any time on it. It's one of the worst in the league. Their offense. What shattered the Leafs' offense – is the most simple defensive structure there is from the Columbus Blue Jackets and putting their three best players on the same line, which is not a foreign concept. Jason Spezza is literally on the Leafs. Uh, It's not a foreign concept, and it completely sunk them. Led to the first goal, like William Nylander thrown to the Sharks. Like, how are you going to have him play center in a game like that? How are you going to have him play center after not doing it in a game like that? I don't know. I, I don't get it. 
So here, wait, I'm not done. Okay. I'm not, I'm not done. After Keefe got promoted to the Leafs, the Toronto Marlies were one of the worst teams in the American league. The Leafs do not have a first round pick unless they magically win Lafreniere tonight. So let's go forward with the assumption that they don't. It's like an 87.5% chance they don't get Lafreniere. They don't have a first round pick. Their farm system is terrible. Their forwards obviously aren't working. Their defense is one of the worst in the league. Frederick Anderson, even if you do think he's top 10, has one year left, and then he's going to ask for money that the Leafs simply aren't going to be able to give him and shouldn't give him because he's over 30. What about the Toronto Maple Leafs am I excited about? They are in a bad, bad way, and Dubas has a lot of work to do, and he better come up with some better answers than Cody Ceci and Tyson Berry. There it is. Like, I don't know. This is a short show. We, we were going to go to two. You want to – is that it? <laughs> is that – I got other videos to do. Like, sorry to get dark. Can I They're not good. Question? What's your? Oh, yeah, sorry. Can what's I, your question? So, let's assume all those things are true. They are. First of all. They are. And you take a look at the Leafs and you say, okay, they're eighth in the conference and they're playing the ninth place team. Yep. Let's, uh, let's do a comparable. In the NBA – Right now in the Eastern Conference, uh, the eight and nine teams are the Orlando Magic and the Charlotte Hornets. Knowing nothing, objectively, Steve, if I told you, hey, the Orlando Magic, you know, they're the eighth place team in the conference, but I expect them to go all the way to Stanley Cup final. You know, they're going to take over. They're going to do it. And then they don't do it. Would you be shocked? Would you be disappointed? No, because that's, that's ridiculous. That's the eighth place team. They're not a very good team. So why... Are we disappointed at the outcome? Why are we surprised if this is such a bad team and the record proves that they're a bad team because every time they go out, they end up in this mediocre position in the standings. So we should be disappointed. These should have been our expectation was that they might lose. This is just a toss-up. This is an 8-9 no. matchup between two mediocre hockey teams. Jesse, for the past two years, we've been told they were the 76ers. Yeah, but Not why, the magic. why would you believe that if every evidence proves otherwise? Well, that's what we're coming to grips with. They're not the 76ers. They're the magic. Yeah. But they have the pieces of the 76ers. Do they, though? Or are you overrating players because they play for your favorite team? Isn't that the question, Jesse? Mm-hmm. Isn't that the question? Who on the Leafs should be safe? Matthews. Yeah, one of the top five players in the NHL. Matthews. That's it. That's the end of the list, right? Mm-hmm. Tavares can go if there's a deal. Marner can go if there's a deal. Willie can go if there's a deal. I like Mo. I'd be sad if he went. Mm-hmm. I like Hyman. I'd be sad if he went. There's no reason to trade Robertson. Muzzin. If there's a deal, he can go. Anyone can go. Who on this team do you love? Matthews. Okay. Like this, this is the thing. And, and this is, this is what I hope. So you can cherry pick quotes and Sheldon Keefe was like, well, they shot 2%. And yeah, it's true. Chris Johnson's article last night is great. Like the Columbus blue jackets are designed to beat the Leafs exactly how they beat them. Just push them to the outside, have them take all these crappy shots uh, and like part of the reason you have to respect that part of the reason the Leafs shot 2% is because of the Blue Jackets. It, it, it's not just Corpus Allo. Like the Blue Jackets put Corpus Allo in a way to, uh, in a position to succeed. Like sometimes we look at these teams and we're like, God, what a goalie factory. Are they a goalie factory or do they just know how to support their goalie? Frederick Anderson on the Liam Foodie goal, the two nothing goal. He can't commit. He can't commit because Justin Hall couldn't do a simple shoulder check on a line change. And Mark Marinson's go-to move is to press L1. Press L1, and he can't commit because the one defensor, uh, defenseman bailed and the other committed to nothing but existence. Martin Marinson was committed to being alive at that moment and nothing else. He wasn't committed to the shooter or the passer. What's Freddie supposed to do? Prepare for what? 
How many balls can you juggle before you start dropping them? You know what I mean? He's the one I, t- I talked about all the things that are bad on the lease. Frederick Anderson is the one where I'm like, I don't know, on a team that can do things, he might be okay. The Leafs can't do things. I don't even remember where this rant started. I went to bed at four in the morning. Um, they're not good. They're not good. And oh, sorry, where I was going with that. So the two percent thing. Uh, the Leafs need to really. They got to tap into the emotions of the most emotional fan base in hockey and they need to respect them are you seriously gonna go ahead and be like well you know it was just bad luck after losing in the first round again you're gonna don't pull out numbers i don't want to hear them no one wants to hear them and no one who watched them was like you, you know what sometimes when a goalie really weathers the storm i saw people earnestly comparing Corpus Allo's performance in this series to Yaroslav Halak in 2010 when him and the Habs toppled the Caps and Penguins. What? Is this podcast sponsored by LASIK too? Are you? That's crazy. Halak stood on his skull and brain. Corpus Allo had to make... Two good saves a game. Yeah. Corpus Allo got yanked in game three that the Leafs lost, by the way, and didn't even play in game four. This dude missed a game and a half in a five-game series, and we're comparing him to Yaroslav Alak in 2010. He didn't work hard. He didn't have to work hard. He didn't have to be a world-beating goalie. The Columbus Blue Jackets put him in a position to succeed, and he did. And they did. And it's a wonderful thing.